What's up, Jackie fam? So in September of this year, Jackie Drift officially celebrated its first birthday. And in my first year on YouTube, I released 22 full-length videos, picked up almost 6,000 subscribers, and generated almost 1 million views. Now don't tell anybody, but I also made a little bit of money in ad revenue and affiliate sales in the process. So in this video, I'm gonna share the secrets to becoming a rich YouTube celebrity, which of course is a huge exaggeration, but I am gonna share a bit about my journey, including the struggles in building a YouTube channel, and essentially the return I've received for all the time and money I've invested. First off, here's a clip for those who might be completely new to drifting. There is a bit more to it, but essentially drifting is sliding your car through a series of turns like this. Now, I've been a fan of drifting for probably about 20 years at this point, which effectively makes me a fossil in the drift community. But coming from pretty humble beginnings, I could just never justify the expense myself. So to help scratch the itch, I've been racing and drifting on various sim racing platforms for probably over a decade at this point. And, you know, it's fun, but obviously it doesn't fully capture the real life experience. That said, I eventually did find myself with enough resources to give real life drifting a shot and started thinking, will the skills I learned on Sim translate to real life? And can I make a YouTube channel to document that journey? So in early 2022, I bought a 2007 Nissan 350Z and started drifting in real life. The most surprising part, aside from the skills actually transferring, was finding myself immersed in an amazing community of people who, for the most part, consistently lift each other up, whether that be driving tips, sharing experiences on car setup, sharing tools, or even just providing words of encouragement. So I pretty quickly decided that I wanted my YouTube channel to share that same spirit. And thus far, I'd like to think that I achieved that goal. Now, circling back to the question I'm sure most of you are actually interested in, which is how much money have you made as a famous internet drifter? First, shame on you if you just skip to this part of the video, but around mid-season last year, I had a random kid come up to me at a drift event and ask me if he could make money on YouTube. I said, yes, you can make some money on YouTube, but probably not a lot. Regardless, he seemed to love that answer and ran back off to tell his parents that he wanted to start a YouTube channel. Sorry, parents. So here's the more detailed answer to his question. In my first full year on YouTube, I made around $1,500 in revenue between YouTube payouts and affiliate links to outside platforms that give me a kickback. Back. I apologize if you were expecting more. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share actual payout rates from YouTube or anything like that, but if you go back to earlier in the video, you could probably figure it out pretty easily. Nonetheless, some people probably won't be impressed by that amount of money, and others might see it and think, wow, I could potentially make almost two grand a year on YouTube. And I'll admit, yeah, it's pretty damn cool that I was able to make some money from videos of me driving. But now let's talk about actual profit, which for the less business savvy among us, basically means taking the amount of money I've made from the channel and subtracting the amount of money I invested into it over the same time. And that's that's where shit kind of hits the fan. While there are exceptions to every rule, the larger channels on modern day YouTube, and especially on the automotive side, are super produced and get a lot of monetary backing from companies directly funding them, legacy subscribers driving significant ad revenue, or just what they make back from ad segments in their videos. More and more channels have basically a crew of people behind the scenes doing editing, camera work, marketing, and all that, which means that they're able to put out a ton of consistently high quality content. As a result, modern day YouTube viewers have higher expectations for the content they consume and a lot less patience for newer creators when aspects like audio and video quality are lacking. As a one-man show with a full-time day job, I can't reasonably hope to achieve the same level of quality or quality quantity as some of the larger car enthusiast channels. But to give myself the best chance for success, I decided that I should invest in some halfway decent gear to get started, which included a lower end DSLR camera, decent microphones, a few GoPros, various camera and mic stands, lighting, and even video editing software. Honestly, it's all become a bit of a blur. I think I've spent over 2K at this point between all that equipment, and the good news is that the costs only go up from there. One of the struggles of new channels is getting discovered, and there are probably thousands of channels out there that put out good content but never make it beyond a few hundred subscribers. A large part of this is that I think users tend to favor channels that already have a lot of subscribers. For example, if you have 10 minutes to watch a video and you see one channel with 500 subs and another with 50,000 covering the same topic, you're more inclined to think that the larger channel's content is gonna be better. And in fairness, that's probably true in a lot of cases for some of the reasons I mentioned earlier. Now I'll tell you a little secret. My day job is in marketing, so that's kind of where my mind immediately goes. So in addition to spending a ton of time optimizing videos from an organic search perspective, I also decided pretty early on that I was gonna reinvest my YouTube profits into running ads with the goal of giving the channel channel an initial boost. So I spent around $900 this year on YouTube ads with about a third of that initially being out of my own money. Obviously that sucks, but Overall, I would say it was a win, since once I got over a thousand subs, they started to roll in at a much higher average pace, even once I stopped running ads. And I think a lot of that has to do with people taking my channel more seriously as my subscriber count grew. All right, now where are we at? $900 in advertising, $2,000 in recording equipment, but wait, there's more. 
Another major thing to consider is your cost for creating content that's interesting to other people. If you're just a gaming channel or a podcast and the draw is your personality, that might be low overhead. For example, my sim content is pretty much free to create at this point, and that's honestly been my bread and butter in terms of views. But even with live stream gaming, for example, a lot of the higher level folks go as far as having a completely separate computer to stream versus the one they're actually gaming on. And we're talking about, you know, thousand dollar plus PC setups. So essentially costs can add up pretty quickly no matter what category you fall into. That said, automotive tends to be a really expensive one. And I've been trying to transition more in that direction with real life car content like my drifting, which is a ridiculously expensive hobby. Realistically, I probably spent north of $5,000 this drift season between event fees, transportation, tires, and who knows what else. I do think I'd continue drifting even if it weren't for the channel, but there were definitely a few events this year where I wasn't 100% in the mood, but still went so I'd have some content to share. So I'm not gonna include all of the drifting costs for my calculations since for the most part it is a hobby, but let's say around $1,000 was a direct cost of me trying to produce content for this channel. And that's effectively my major struggle looking into 2024. It's an unfortunate reality that a lot of the popular YouTube car or motorsport related channels are centered around spending and or having lots of money. Big builds, expensive engines blowing up, exclusive event coverage, professional drivers doing cool shit on private tracks, and those kind of things are effectively the bulk of the automotive content you'll see on YouTube getting millions of views. Transparently, I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna keep pace with that, but I do know that I'm doing my best to evolve the channel to help take it to the next level. As an example, for one of my upcoming videos, I'm looking at renting track time to do a quasi-drift competition, and that would probably be the most ambitious thing I've done thus far. The problem is that it's probably gonna cost me in the ballpark of $500 of my own personal money to make this video happen, and then you're kind of praying the YouTube algorithm picks it up and it gets traction. On average, my top videos have generated around $100 each in ad revenue. So if I take the chance and spend $500 to create a video, never mind the 20 plus hours it'll take for me to fully produce and even the favors I'm calling in, for it to only make $100 would really suck. Some of what I thought were my best videos basically died at a thousand views, so it's a huge gamble to lay out your own money like that. Anyway, back to actual profits, it's time to do some math. I mentioned already that I made $1,500 in revenue. To get profit, first we'll subtract the $2,000 I spent in gear, which already puts us at a $500 loss. Then we'll include the $900 for advertising and $1,000 for content production. And that leaves me at negative $2,400 profit or effectively loss. Yay. <laughs> Oh God. The good news is that some of this is potentially just one-time cost. I mean, hopefully I can keep running the same camera gear and then I don't know that I'll do any more advertising. So that same $1,500 potentially turns into some actual income next year or can be used elsewhere to help support new content. And then of course, you're always hoping that as your sub count grows, your monthly revenue does the same. So if you folks could subscribe and watch all of my videos on repeat, that would be that would be much appreciated. I feel the need to clarify that I am not in it for the money. And I don't think anyone should become a creator on YouTube specifically for that reason. But I do often think about how I can grow the channel and allow myself to dedicate more time to this. I've probably spent hundreds of hours at this point building Janky Drift. And as you've seen, I've also spent thousands of dollars. And there are days when I think, can I realistically keep this going? But as cheesy as it probably sounds, my main return from this channel has been in the form of spiritual or personal growth and satisfaction. And I honestly think coming into YouTube, especially in this day and age when the landscape is so competitive, that's really all you can ask for. If you make a few bucks in the process, awesome. But as they say, don't quit your day job. You might get lucky. You might have that special ingredient to becoming a famous YouTuber, but it's got to start out as a labor of love. Now, while I wanted to provide a realistic view of what it means to try and build a YouTube presence, I don't want to overshadow the fact that I am extremely grateful for everything I've been able to do so far. This year, I've had at least a dozen people come up to me at events and tell me they recognize me from YouTube and or that my channel has helped them in some way, which is honestly incredibly humbling and flattering all at the same time. It means a lot to know that I've helped people and that all of this work I'm putting into this channel is having a positive impact on someone. But overall, I hope this was an interesting look into the inner workings of my channel. I don't know what exactly Janky Drift is going to look like over the next year, but I am damn sure going to give it my best shot and have as much fun as I can in the process. In the end, I realize all I can do is focus on improving with each video and figuring out ways to put out interesting content as efficiently as possible. Anyway, just want to give a quick thanks to all the folks who follow me and have helped make this channel a reality. Good luck to anyone in my same position as a content creator. And as always, I am more than happy to answer any of your burning questions in the comments, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Please consider commenting, liking, and subscribing as that helps the channel probably more than you realize. If you want to help the channel more directly, maybe consider buying one of these super cool vinyls from the janky shop. Otherwise, I guess, uh, you know, just watch some more videos.